Statistically speaking, 51% of all politicians say that they play golf the same way they do business, and it's estimated that over 82% of all politicians lie and cheat. <laughs> Just saying. Andrew Coyne, he's a CBC personality in Canada, and he's also a writer for the National Post. And I'd like to give you some excerpts from a recent article that he had in the National Post. He says this, why should voting, the fundamental act of democracy, be an option and not like jury duty or paying your taxes become a basic obligation of citizenship. It's time we considered making voting mandatory. The argument for compulsory voting is a strong one. When you cast your vote, you're helping to make a collective decision about providing for everybody's needs. That sounds a little bit socialistic, don't you think? You owe your fellow citizen, your council, in other words, you benefit because they vote. More than 30 countries have some form of compulsory voting. Well, of course they do, Andrew, because you get a gun held to your head and you vote now or we're going to put you down. I mean, come on already. He ends all this with saying, what's stopping us? My answer to that clearly is wisdom. You can't do stuff like that. Well, I guess you can. 30 countries have, but it ain't democracy and it ain't right. I mean, what about the people who don't vote? We don't want most of them to vote. They're uninformed if you're going to have compulsory voting, maybe you better have compulsory education. Send them to a political science school or something? I don't think so. When does it stop and when does it start? It's a slippery slope. The people that don't vote, most of them, they don't care. They don't know. They don't have any understanding. They first need to catch on and figure it out who does what in the country and governments and so on, and they don't know that. So it's not fair to have them vote if they don't want to vote. In Richmond, Virginia, there's a 17-year-old high school senior recently who was kicked out of her prom because her dress was too short and her dress was too low. And she was dancing and the teacher said, hey, that's very provocative. You're going to make blood boil here with young men and they're going to start to think impure thoughts. So said the uh, establishment. You know, here's a true fact of science now for you. The amount of heat your body gives off each day is enough to boil eight gallons of freezing water. I watched the video clip with her dancing and then I walked into the kitchen and I thawed out about 28 gallons of water. So just maybe the teachers are onto something there. Hey, and I'm old, but I'm still dangerous. One percent of all babies born in the United States of America are conceived through in vitro fertilization. That's 99 percent who aren't of course. So in keeping with, um, you know, the relative stats, I guess, I'm talking now homosexuality. Where did I get that from? But you know what? 1% to 2% is estimated to be homosexual people, and they command about 90 to 99% of all the press time. So it looks like we're now going to have to hear about this fertilization thing for a long time coming. They're probably going to take over the press just saying. We have a story here about the Liberal Festival of Debt and Deficit and Deceit in Ontario, Canada. They have an election coming up there soon. And the Liberals, you know what, they're just a bunch of whacks. They're saying, we've lost and wasted and so much of your money and we've done so many illegal things, elect us so we can do more of the same, please. I hope the people there figure it out. Alberta people should be allowed to vote because they're the ones that keep them on life support. Just wanted to end that with you or share that with you. The end is now. Here it comes. People have rigid flexibility when it comes to investing and separating their money, the potential future of money or their money, I guess, and what they think is their ethical base. And a lot of verbiage there, but here it comes. 27% of all investors today would not invest in financial companies. They think they're shaky, but 95% all of, of all investors will invest in uh, guns, alcohol, or tobacco producers. All right, flexible, rigidly. Y'all come back tomorrow. We're going to more for you from the right. See ya.